Welcome to the show, everyone. It's the Crypto Lark. Today I have with me Angelo from AdBank. Angelo, welcome. Thanks very much for having me. My pleasure. Now, AdBank is one that I think a lot of people will remember because you guys had the best ICO video ever, ever. That was hilarious. Thank you. Hey, <laughs> Where that did was that? That <laughs> <laughs> was it was a genius idea to have such a cool, um, you know. Ad, and I'll, I'll put a link down in the description below for anybody who hasn't seen that video yet. It's definitely a good laugh, but let's get serious. Serious time. Let's get serious. So what are you guys trying to do? Can you give us the elevator pitch? Yeah, for sure. So basically, AdBank is born to solve three major problems in the advertising industry, the digital advertising industry. And uh, this, the second and third problem are really deeply connected to the first. And the first is a lack of transparency. So when you put your money into a, an ad network or uh, with ad tech middlemen uh, in whatever incarnation that they come in, they, uh, they take your money, they spit out the analytics and data on the other end, but there's no ability to audit that and there's no transparency of the payments between advertisers and publishers. So what that's done is it's created uh, an ecosystem where fraud runs rampant and uh, the markups are really aggressive. So in terms of the markups, we're talking 50% on average of every dollar uh, from the advertiser is just lost to the middleman before it even makes it to the publisher. But what's even worse is the problem of fraud, which is costing 50 billion or excuse me, $50 million a day. It's going to cost 50 billion in the next 10 years, uh, less than 10 years, actually. And it's the number one most uh, uh, excuse me, after the number one most profitable source of income for organized crime, which is drugs, uh, the second most profitable is ad fraud. So it's a massive, massive problem that people have no idea about. That's yeah, crazy. I know. I know. It, <laughs> honestly, every time I say it, it, it's still like, it still gets that emotion from me where I can't even believe that it's a real stat, but it's 100% real. That's crazy. I just imagine like the Godfather sitting around going, you know, okay, we're going to do olive oil, the heroin, and the fake ads. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's crazy. Know, it's so wild. Like, there's one group of Russian hackers, just a small group of Russian hackers that makes three to five million a day oh faking videos. That's one group. You know what I mean? So to give you a really small glimpse into, uh, you know, what's happening in there it gives you an idea of how much that can be affecting everybody so when you think about half uh, you know on average of every dollar getting lost to middlemen that's before fraud comes into the mix and uh, over 56 or over 50 percent of all website traffic is bots uh so you know we're dealing with an internet that is less human than human and so we need to address that problem in a meaningful way and when we're living in an ecosystem where everything is very opaque, you know, transparency is not the name of the game in digital advertising, there's no incentive to actually solve that problem mm. in a way. So that's kind of where the blockchain comes in and why it's a really good fit. This incentives problem is a real thing for the, the centralized business models. And I've just seen this so many times where the centralized models don't care how much fraud there is. And this is this is all right across the board with most centralized industries. They simply don't care because no matter what happens, they just keep winning. They keep getting the money. And so why would they want to deliver more for their clients or more for the end users when it doesn't matter? They get make money either way unless right. a new model comes by that disrupts them. Exactly. That's, and that's the thing, right? People don't, uh, when it comes to the lack of incentivization, you know, I always use the example of a, a teenager that's cleaning their room. You know, how good of a job is a teenager going to do cleaning their room if they know nobody's going to see it? The mm -hmm. answer is, you know, and that's what we're seeing in digital advertising when it comes to fraud. It's not that the big giants aren't trying to address fraud in any way. They have anti-fraud uh, tools. They have anti-fraud teams even. But when nobody's there to check the score and the fox is watching the hen house, you know what happens next. <laughs> That's exactly true. Very, very interesting. So what is the technological solution then that you're trying to put forward to solve this problem? 
Yeah. So the big thing for us, and uh, I think what's a, a major misconception about uh, kind of what differentiates us from other advertising uh, projects on the blockchain is we're actually platform agnostic. So we're trying to build tools that other networks can integrate to get the benefits of the blockchain. So the first in our uh, products, our flagship product is going to be the anti-fraud AI, which will be coming out in fall. And uh, so we already have ads live on the blockchain. We've acquired an ad network uh, using the ICO funds that we raised. Um, and we also started a crypto ad network in June. Um, so we already have ads running live. And uh, what we're really motivated on right now is driving as much volume through true utility to feed into that artificial intelligence, the anti-fraud AI, which we have patent pending for, um, so that that has as quality data and as much data as possible because uh, those who know even just a little bit about AI know that it's a, a very data hungry endeavor and the more data the better and so really what we want to do is we want to create tools that will benefit all of the uh, uh, the digital advertising ecosystem without trying to say we want to create the only network that will ever exist in advertising because then you get situations like Google and Facebook being the only real, uh, you know, taking 80% of all the ad dollars mm -hmm. online, you know, and, and I think the, the recent figure I saw is Google and Facebook are taking 20% uh, of all advertising sales, period, online and app, offline when you factor them both, you know, and that's not good for the industry, right? And so what our approach is more of saying is like, well, let us take the burden of fixing these problems that are unprofitable for the industry and let's let the industry use them. So, you know, whether it is a blockchain based ad network or not, you know, they'll be able to tap into our tools and get the benefits and focus on what they're doing best. Nice. I, I like the concept. You're kind of making a toolbox and saying, here, guys, use the tools that we've made for you. Now, you're going to be running on Ethereum, and obviously we all know about the long conversations of Ethereum scaling problems, blah, 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 blah. But yep. the reality is, is that what exactly is going to be going on the blockchain in terms of, you know, is every ad going to go across the blockchain or is it just the contract for the ad going to go on the blockchain? Yeah, no. Uh, very common question that we get because the scalability is the, you know, the topic of the day right now with EOS just launching uh, mainnet in June, you know, the, the race for scalability is probably as intense as it's ever been. Um, for us, we have never looked at the digital advertising ecosystem as something that wholly needs to exist on the blockchain. There is kind of like this impulsive nature, uh, because blockchain is amazing. It is truly world-changing technology. It, it's, it, it will change so many industries in a very dramatic way. Um, but not everything needs to live on the blockchain because it's not good at everything, mm. at least not yet. Um, so that's something that we've taken to heart. Um, the payments layer is what exists on the blockchain for us. And that's actually what the payment pro or excuse me, what the anti-fraud AI actually taps into. It's on the payment layer, which is unique um, in that sense as well. So um, with the scalability, we don't have an issue there because we're actually bundling, bundling transactions off chain uh, at the speed that is necessary to meet the demand of the network. Um, and that uh, is really as simple as that for fixing what we need. Um, and, you know, if we were going to trigger a smart contract for every ad impression displayed, even the entire EOS network wouldn't be enough for us. Um, it's, it's an intensive amount of transactions that are going on. Mm -hmm. and it's just not necessary at the end of the day. So that's kind of been our approach. Um, you know, if there are um, practical applications that make sense for what we're trying to do, you know, we're open to whatever it takes to meet that demand. But Ethereum, obviously has amazing developer support. Um, you know, I'm personally kind of in the camp of, I'm very excited about the other platforms that are coming out. Um, I'm watching them very closely. And I think infrastructure is a really exciting part of crypto. It is the part of crypto really, especially in these days still. Um, and, uh, uh, but I also believe that Ethereum has the ability to scale. It's just hard to scale something that's already that decentralized. Mm -hmm. It's easier to scale something that is less uh, decentralized and more centralized, but the complication comes in when you try to do that afterwards. So, uh, you know, I, I, on one hand, I'm excited to see other blockchains and other platforms emerge and become leaders. Um, but at, 
I'm also very positive uh, on the future of Ethereum and their ability to scale. You know, incredible team, incredible mm -hmm. development. So something that um, shouldn't be dismissed quickly. Absolutely. Totally agree. Let's move on to your marketplace. So you're going to have a marketplace where if I want to buy an ad, I can go there and essentially access services. Yeah. So this is actually really interesting in the sense of uh, our strategic approach to why we even have ad networks. And the thing is, in this stage, you know, we know there's so many projects that get flack because they don't have true utility today. Right. There's a lot of talk about what it will happen, what will happen when adoption occurs. But the adoption is is the domino that still has yet to fall. And so that's something that we really focus. And uh, when it comes to ad networks, there's an inherent chicken or the egg problem. Right. Why do advertisers want to come onto a network that doesn't have publishers? Why do publishers want to be there if there's no advertisers, right? It, it's kind of a, a really delicate equilibrium. Um, so we use a large part of our ICO funds to uh, set aside for acquisitions. We made our first one uh, just a few months ago, and it was in a specific vertical. Uh, actually, interestingly enough, in the uh, eSig vertical, which is, seems a little strange on the surface, but when we kind of looked at all the different uh, boxes that we were ticking on our list in terms of uh, what we needed to uh, execute at this stage, it was actually a really good fit because it was an industry that was struggling to advertise in traditional methods. You know, long before crypto had been banned, this is an industry that had had very limited options in terms of advertising, couldn't use Google, couldn't use Facebook. Wow. You know, you know, already long down there. So they are uh, an industry that's more prone or more uh, uh, likely to innovate and try new things. And that's something that's really important too. You know, like it's kind of the elephant in the room with a lot of ICOs and crypto projects is who's going to be the first in the industry to take the risk and try something this new, you know, especially when there's, uh, you know, all sorts of different things that they're hearing about cryptocurrency if they're not in the space, right? Um, uh, you know, from the FUD to the legitimate concerns to just like the downright crazy, like Bitcoin's only used for terrorists sort of mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, for us, we we thought, okay, well, it makes the most sense that rather than saying, hey, we're going to be able to convince Google or Tabula or Outbrain or name whatever ad network you want to adopt our unproven technology, why don't we buy and create ad networks in specific verticals so it's easier to actually disrupt those spaces rather than saying we're going to create an ad network that can service the pet store down on the corner of toronto to uh you know steel manufacturing business in texas you know that's you need a very specific set of publishers to get advertisers results mm -hmm. so by focusing in specific verticals um, that has been actually a really, really great way for us to ramp up adoption in a fast way. So with our ad network, our crypto ad network, we, we just launched this month, you know, it's small but fierce um, with 3 million impressions already being served on the blockchain, 100% uh, of inventory sold out, you mm -hmm. know, and this is important too that we don't grow too fast because if we bought an ad network that was too big or bit off more than we could chew, there's inevitably things that we don't know that are going to happen. And so it's important to kind of take the right steps, like the, the crawl, walk, run approach. And for us, having ad networks launched in specific verticals was a smart way to fast track the process of adoption. Rather than trying to bang down the doors of everywhere endlessly, we can go in our own backyard and make stuff happen today. And uh, that is really critical for us to making sure that we're always progressing each and every day. We're moving closer to creating a, an advertising ecosystem for the entire internet that can exist on the blockchain and get the benefits of the blockchain where it makes the most sense. And that takes time and it takes a, a strategy of adoption that is sensical rather than saying pie in the sky, we're going to do everything all at once. This is a plan of attack that is uh, so far in our early tests proving to be very successful and, and making a lot of sense. And in, a, in an interesting kind of way, you're almost fighting ad censorship as well, because by giving you know the e-cig industry or the crypto industry the ability to to put ads out there, that's big because there has been a censorship of advertising, which is 
kind of ridiculous. We see a lot of censorship, in particular when it comes to crypto-related businesses, is going on on the internet. So if you can actually give tools to people to kind of move beyond that censorship, at least in a little bit, that's pretty big. Yeah, you know, I think blockchain, that's another really powerful uh, uh, element of it, right? Is it can liberate areas that have been uh, repressed in, in whether it is, uh, you know, un, uh, banking the unbanked or whether it's, uh, it, you know, giving the ability to advertise to industries that have been cut off. And obviously, you know, um, anything that's uh, uh, illegal or whatever, you um, obviously an exception in that case, but, uh, you know, cryptocurrency is not illegal. Um, E-cig, not illegal. Uh, even cannabis uh, is an interesting space that we looked at and we haven't really uh, made any moves in, but it was intriguing to us because people in the cannabis market, when it comes to advertising, were struggling with the payments. Mm -hmm. And the payment with them is their bank accounts are getting frozen and they could be legitimate companies that actually have a legal license and are operating in areas where it's totally legal and still have that issue and they can't make payroll even though they have the money and crypto is a really interesting solution in that case so we are having some like very early stage uh discussions around that just to see you know what uh, uh synergies exist there because for us you know our end game we we want to do this for the fortune 500s but we don't want to sit around and wait until they're ready to do it we want to make progress in the meantime so that when that time comes we're the obvious choice and and i think that uh these steps can help doing that especially when we're at a stage where Let's be honest, you know, crypto is not mass adopted yet, right? It's mass awareness, I think, at this point. We can agree on that. But mass adoption is still a little ways to go, uh, a ways to go. And, uh, you know, we want to be there ready for it uh, with the connections and the relationships and the technology. Nice. Brave. Now, they have their basic attention token, which is focused on getting people to opt in to ads, of course, or to reward uh, content users. But they also have their Brave browser, which is essentially an ad-blocking browser. And ad-blocking is becoming, I think, more and more prevalent, particularly amongst um, my age group, our age group, right? And I know yeah. that, I mean, I've got an ad blocker on my Chrome when I use Chrome for whatever reason I might have to. And I usually use the Brave browser, which just fully filters out all ads. How do you try and compete with that increasing amount of people who are trying to block out ads while trying to have a business focused on delivering internet ads? Yeah, you know, it's an interesting question because ad block is something that's becoming more and more common and there's ways to circumvent it that are actually surprisingly easy, um, which, you know, that's a cat and mouse game in and of itself. So I won't go too deep down that rabbit hole. But the way that I look at it is there is a very, uh, again, like a delicate equilibrium here with content and advertising. The reality is, is that everything that everybody loves to consume, whether it's content on the internet uh, or even radio, you know, uh, before, uh, before even um, internet and, and uh, internet video, you know, we even had, I remember having bunny ears on my first TV in my bedroom when I thought it was super cool getting my like three channels I could get. And, uh, how do you get that TV for free when that happened? Well, it was advertising. Um, you know, we even see free magazines that are high, have high quality content in print paid for by advertising. Um, so I think that this is an envelope that can only be pushed so much until you start to see the content that you love and want to consume go away. And there's either going to have to be one of two things that happen, right? It's either there's a, um, a, a change in advertising meaning uh, bad advertising is a real problem. You know, poorly targeted advertising is a real problem. Mm -hmm. And that leads to the experience that people, uh, makes people want to block ads. And so that's a problem. Um, and that's one thing that needs to be solved. And I think Brave actually has some interesting ways that they're going about it. Um, and they do address uh, uh, an area of the market that really just kind of, um, caters to a user experience that a certain subset of people want to access, you know, and uh, the problem with having a totally ad free experience is then publishers have no control over their revenue. So 
what happens then? How do publishers actually sustain their income, right? The answer is, is that they don't when they go out of business. And this is what's happening every single day. You know, publishers, I have, uh, so I used to run a marketing agency. Uh, the, the last one I had was my second one. And uh, I'm very familiar with the issue of PR. We, mil- we build uh, PR lists of media contacts. You know, let's say we wanted to find all the people that wrote about blockchain in the last three months. And uh, we would send them an email and say, hey, you know, we've got this client that's in this space. We noticed that you wrote about this. Check this out. You know, that sort of process. Um, What's interesting that we found time and time again is that if we use the same list, even two weeks later, up to 50 percent of the emails would bounce back because people are getting fired in that high levels. It's crazy. So the publishing industry is really suffering. And. Our philosophy is that giving publishers more power to monetize is the answer rather than saying this is the ecosystem, this is how it will be, you have to fit within it. And something that regimented is great for the user and I totally understand kind of the approach there. Um, but the, the problem is, is that it forgets about the publisher and the advertiser and that's really the two stakeholders that mm-hmm. keep that them alive and healthy so our belief is we want to keep them the primary stakeholders we want to give them more power because even advertisers and publishers have been powerless against the middlemen that have connected them and so we're trying to go for there as the quickest path to disruption um so i do want to say one thing i think brave is super cool i think they're a great team you know it's hard to argue the credibility of that project and honestly as a project uh being the fastest sold ico in history uh and being a pioneer in the blockchain advertising space we honestly look to them as uh as peers you know and when we look at the size of the digital marketing uh space the actual size of the market and look at the size of crypto it's the same size the market cap is the same size. So if I were to say to you, you know, do you think there is only room for a few winners in crypto? The answer would be no, mm-hmm. right? And that's the same case with advertising and uh, and publishing and kind of the industries that intersect there is there will be many winners. And there are so many nuances in this industry and so many different uh, spaces to play in, many of which that blockchain are good for that it will be very difficult for one company to dominate all of them, nor is that a good thing exactly. for the market. So, um, you know, salute. I definitely want to salute Brave, you know, Adex, uh, you know, other people in our space. We're, we're brothers in arms. You know, we're not, uh, we're, we're not actually as competitive as I think the crypto market thinks we is, uh, thinks we are. I, I'm like at the end of the day right now. <laughs> trying to recover from a cold and like realizing I'm like not even speaking properly. But uh, <laughs> anyway, my main point being is that it, it, I, I'm very excited about what everybody else is doing in the digital advertising blockchain space. And we are stronger together than we are trying to convince ourselves that we're against each other. Mm-hmm. Cause we're at, we actually have a common enemy. You know, we have a common goal. And when you dig deep enough, you'll see that we're actually operating in our own spectrum. There's very little overlap for many of the crypto advertising projects. You know, as we start to get into this year, ICOs are getting more and more saturated. I'm sure we're going to see more of that overlap. But, you know, of the the initial ones, you know, like initial in the last year before we started to get into this real craziness, um, I haven't seen much overlap. And the overlap has been very healthy in a sense that, if we can uh, foster a kind of environment of collaboration, which blockchain is is heavily rooted in, um, we're all going to win rather than there just being a couple winners. That's just that's not how advertising works. Mm-hmm. It's not how any market works, really. And nobody wants it to be that way. So, um, you know, somewhere in there is a few answers that hopefully address your question. But uh, those are my thoughts on the matter. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I, I like the whole idea that it's not a zero sums game yeah especially advertising it's huge it's so big you know and like even just the problem of ad fraud is a multi-billion dollar a year problem you know there's companies out there single companies 
that could literally save, like Procter & Gamble spends over $7 billion a year on advertising. Think about the market of just fixing Procter & Gamble's advertising problems. Like many businesses could live off that. Many of many do actually. So uh, I, I think it's, it's going to be really exciting to see the innovators come out and uh, you know, we we're seeing people that are going in different verticals like affiliate marketing versus uh, video advertising and trying to fix the problems in there because I think it's kind of like an onion when you look at the advertising industry and you start to peel back the layers you realize it is it's an absolute disaster with the amount of problems that it has and, and we don't thinking. know because it's not, not transparent right and if it's not transparent how do we know and so it, you know I think blockchain is all about as a whole it's about getting to a more transparent world not because all the problems are going to be solved overnight but now we can actually see the problems broad as day and actually do something about them rather than allowing people to keep sweeping it under the rug and i think that's what's important is that the players that are acting the best in the best interest of the people they're the ones that'll win because it's all there for everybody to see and scrutinize you know trust is gained you know, it's it's earned. It's not something that that you can just buy or fool people into. You know, when people are actually using this for the true utility, the writing is on the wall. You can you can look under the hood and see for yourself. And if you don't like it, you're gonna go somewhere else. Exactly. Now, last question here for you for today. Recently, you guys have signed a partnership with Howdo, which is, I think, if they've finished their ICO or their current ICO, recent ICO, but Howdo is yep. an upcoming uh, social network. So what does that partnership exactly entail? Yeah. So, you know, we actually have a lot of parallels between uh, our vision and their vision. At the core of it is that we believe creators of content are unfairly compensated for their work. Um, and that is really at the core of how do an ad bank's mission. And so really um, what we're trying to accomplish and look into with our partnership is how can ad banks technology help how do's creators monetize what they're doing in a way that is transparent and profitable for everybody involved so that the advertisers who are getting access to those audiences that are the creators are generating are getting that at a fair rate and that the publisher and the creator of it uh, are, are getting compensated fairly enough so they can keep doing it. You know, it, when I think about even your show, like I've watched your show for, uh, I think about a year now or uh, so, like really heavily watching a lot of the YouTubers. Um, it, it really angers me when I think about people that are in your shoes that are making content that provides value to so many people that struggle to get compensated fairly than uh, because of that because if I were to advertise on your channel that's gonna bring a lot of value to me mm -hmm. you should see the benefit of that value and that's what helps continue uh, let you to continue to deliver that value so that more people watch so it's more valuable for me as an advertiser and that's how this the circle completes but somewhere along the way it all got broken and just sucked into the middle and that's not really good for anybody. It's good for a very small number of people. And I think uh, I've said it so many times uh, before and again, but you know, there's a few use cases for blockchain that are just absolutely indisputable. And obviously finance, number one, but the close runners up, in my opinion and many others, supply chain advertising. It's just a no brainer because of the problems that we face. Mm -hmm. you know, Another one is voting, but I won't get into that one. <laughs> <laughs> First and foremost, like, let's focus on the uh, the advertising industry to start with anyway, because the problem's massive. And this is the thing is this, this massive fraud, total lack of transparency, undue amounts of powers going to third parties, over centralization, all the stuff that we like to see blockchain disrupting, essentially. Yeah. Angelo, this has been a really, really great chat. So thank you for taking the time to sit down and tell us what AdBank is doing and how you guys are working to actually address this problem. So thank you so much. It's my pleasure. I'm really glad that we got the chance to do this. And uh, thanks again. For sure. Thanks so much for watching the video. Let me know what you think about AdBank in the comment section down below. Thumbs up the video. Share these videos around the internet to help our community grow. Join the conversation over on Twitter where we continue the conversation. Long live the blockchain, and peace out till next time.